Friends and folks, welcome to Kaiju Lounge. I'm your boss, Monster Noah Waterman, and we do not have a live show for you tonight. I know, I know, disappointed, but I am filming this ahead of time because I'll be out of town spending time with the family for the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur. So for those of you unaware, Yom Kippur is one of the two high holy days alongside Rosh Hashanah and is a day of atonement and reflection. We ask forgiveness for the mistakes we made in the past and look to better ourselves for the upcoming year. In a lot of ways, it's, it's similar to Lent, except with less schmutz on the forehead. But the point is, I, I will not be around for a live show, and honestly, that's a shame. This has been a really weird week for gaming, specifically for Microsoft. See, one of the biggest leaks we have seen in a while got out to the public, releasing all sorts of emails and documents about future plans for the company. And it shed a ton of light on how Xbox team is viewing the world. And it doesn't really make them look great. This is why I've decided to pre-record a quick video before I go uh, discussing the top five sins Microsoft should atone for on Yom Kippur. Number five, poor taste. In late August, Phil Spencer said that it was a loss to Xbox that Baldur's Gate 3 was not available on the platform. Keep in mind, this wasn't an exclusivity thing, this was a compatibility thing with the Series S, and Microsoft generally wants their games to run roughly the same on both systems. Nonetheless, Phil said, it's a game I want to see on the platform. Really? Phil? Really? Because from the recently leaked documents, you seem to feel otherwise. Allegedly, when looking at what games to include on Game Pass, Phil Spencer dismissed the CRPG hit as a second-run Stadia RPG. Ouch. A burn on both Larian and Google. Turns out this supposed Stadia hit is one of the most beloved games of the year and is giving their precious Starfield a run for its money. Amazing sales on PlayStation and over 875,000 concurrent players on Steam. And that's a game that's not currently an Xbox? You really screwed the bear on that one, didn't you, Phil? No, 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 it's, it's okay, it's okay. At least you had Redfall. Number four, Hubris. Well, Game Pass is good. It's like really good. It's arguably the best service of its kind in the games industry today, but it's not perfect. It's kind of like Netflix, the model it's approaching. Because for every one episode of The Witcher, there's like eight of Myths and Monsters, a show so bad they literally stole deviant fan art for it. But they are fighting to make it work. They've taken major steps to bring exclusive studios into their mix. They did it with Bethesda, they are trying to with Activision Blizzard, and apparently they want to with Nintendo? See, that in and of itself, not a sin. The issue is his mindset towards it. Apparently he said... It's just taken a long time for Nintendo to see that their future exists off their own hardware. A long time. Squeeze me? First of all, there is no games industry without Nintendo. That's like trying to buy Disney. That King Koopa airship has to crash and burn before they're willing to sell themselves to the American company that tends to find itself on the wrong side of console war history. And off its own platform? You mean the platform that sold 129.5 million units? Software so good that five-year-old games are still on the best sellers list? For God's sakes, quit buying Mario Kart 8. I want Mario Kart 9. A system that sold better in six years than the crossover success the Wii did in its lifetime? I'm sorry, but you're going to have to pry that kingdom out of Mario's cold, dead, Redfall vampire-esque hands. And I hear he's a vicious monster. Number three, a lack of self-reflection. Phil's doing a lot of pointing fingers elsewhere, so hopefully, in the spirit of Yom Kippur, he can do a little self-reflection. See, in an email revealed as part of this massive leak, Phil stated that AAA publishers were slow to react to the new digital storefront landscape of Steam in the various console shops. They have not found a way to effectively cross-promote and build brands that drive consumer affinity, Finally, he says, the role of the AAA publisher has changed and become less important in today's gaming industry. Here's the thing, I, I don't think he's wrong here. Unfinished games, sad money-grabbing tactics, a reliance on updates and patches to fix already public games, insert Redfall joke here. Hell, even the state of the indie games that crowd the marketplace is giving us more variety and options to play. And that last one's not actually a bad thing. 
He's absolutely right. The role of the AAA publisher has diminished. And it's Microsoft's own fault. It's Microsoft that popularized the indie playing field with Xbox Live Arcade, turning all the former Adobe Flash fans into gaming studios. Microsoft set up the paid DLC economic model in the 360, and the Simpsons-style tire fire went up immediately with horse armor. As we speak, Microsoft is trying to go digital only, as made evident by their future console plans, which will only help incentivize focusing on due date instead of having a finished game ready. Look, if you're going to claim AAA studios are dying, maybe let go of the knife first. Number two. Neither Microsoft or Sony will admit it, but when company makes news, the other is paying very close attention. Naturally, both companies try to align their console releases so that they stay competitive to each other, and that level of constant comparison goes straight to the top. It's a rivalry of mutual respect and hate at the same time. I kind of like Ash Ketchum and Gary Oak if both companies were just Gary Oak. So it was interesting to hear Phil Spencer's take on the PS5 when it was released. He said, We have a better product that Sony has, not just on hardware, but equally important on the software platform and services on top of the hardware. We have the ingredients of a winning plan. History has seen that differently. This email was sent three and a half years ago, and since then the PS5 sales have grown while the Series SX has not. Their exclusives have not matched up to Sony's, and even Xbox has since admitted that they haven't stopped losing the console war since 2001. I mean, they're falling flatter here than... Uh, I don't know, uh, some, some reference. It's ironic that they want to buy Nintendo as they are the Sega in this new war. It hasn't all been losses here, Starfield being a recent big win for the American company, but with a market share of only 16% in 2021... Foresight has not been poor Philip's strong suit. And number one, attention to the big details. Microsoft has a lot of atonement to do on this day of self-reflection, but the biggest one is not the various leaks that got out to the public, but the act of leaking itself. See, as a normal part of the judicial process, both Microsoft and the FTC have had to upload documents for the court to review. Normally, these documents are heavily redacted because the records are public. And mistakes happen, but they are small. This, this here was not small. Both the FTC and the court have been very quick to point the blame elsewhere. The court has even explained that they had asked both parties to provide a secure cloud link with all the pertinent documents with established redactions made. These documents were then uploaded to the court's public records. In short, Microsoft didn't read the fucking manual. I'm sure it's a pain to search every email and document of, a, of non-public information to redact, but did your lawyers even look at this? Are they blind? Is Kenshi reading these? Probably not, because you tried to buy Warner Brothers games, but that deal fell through when you realized it wouldn't net you the Mortal Kombat IP, and I know that because your blind lawyer didn't read the emails. Like, I'm glad you can think about paying $100 million to get Assassin's Creed Mirage or $300 million for Jedi Survivor, but you can't afford to pay attention. And I know you guys were expecting a Redfall joke here, uh, but not on this fact. Guys, this whole thing just really, really sucks for Microsoft. That's our bit for this week. As I mentioned, there will be no Kaiju Lounge live today. For those who celebrate, have a uh, somber Yom Kippur. Uh, for the rest of you, enjoy your week as we will be back next Monday with the live show. I just hope I'm not missing, honestly, anything else that happens. W what's that? Tokyo Game Show was... Is, th is this weekend? Son of a...